Hello, everyone. It's Ariana Newcomer, the host of Reclaiming the Wise Woman Elder for the Healing of Earth. And with me today, I have the beautiful, powerful, and fabulous Brooke Medicine Eagle. I'm so delighted to have you with us, Brooke. I am just thrilled to be here. And I'm going to read you her bio, and then Brooke is going to lead us into this conversation with a song and prayer. Brooke Medicine Eagle is a legendary earth keeper, wisdom teacher, healer, visionary, singer, songwriter, shamanic practitioner, catalyst for wholeness, and ceremonial leader. She's the best selling author of the Native American literary classic, Buffalo Woman Comes Singing, and of The Last Ghost Dance. Over the last 40 years, her many music recordings, teachings, writings, conference appearances, and wilderness spiritual retreats have touched the hearts and minds of people all over the world. Decades ago, she brought forward ancient native traditional ways of moon time and women's mysteries, including the, elder, the Elders Wisdom Lodge, and continues to feel strongly about the importance of feminine practice for women's health, spirit, leadership, and service to the world. She is now traveling and offering women's circles and retreats internationally, experiencing the beauty and challenges of women in the wider world. And Brooke, you're in France now, am I right? Yes, I'm in the absolutely fabulous French Alps today. Ah, oh, beautiful. So please give us your opening song in prayer. Flower song, oh flower song. Make your life a beauty song. Flower song, oh spirit song. A flower song I sing. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Oh, hey, oh, hey. So creator, great, beautiful Mother Earth, we give thanks on this day for the opportunity to come together to talk about elder women flowering, blossoming another flower on the stalk of their already full life. So I ask that I might be a hollow bone to bring through what will really serve and I ask for a special blessing on each and every woman who listens to this and man. So creator, we're grateful on this day for the blossoming that is coming with the rising feminine on this sweet and beautiful earth. May all life be served. Ho, Itakiasi. Beautiful, thank you so much. I really appreciate setting sacred space. This is a sacred mission that we are on to bring the elder wisdom, especially of women, forward into the world at a time when it is desperately needed. So thank you. You are so welcome. So tell us uh, first of some of your history of the work that you've done with Moon Lodges. Well, many years ago, I was given the information that I had never been given early in my life about Moon Lodge and about uh, women's mysteries. And I started sharing it then, and um, it didn't seem like it was time for it to wake up so much. But now younger women have picked up uh, the call, and uh, it's beginning to come forward into the world. And I wanted to share with everyone uh, just this real brief sense of this Moon Lodge work because it leads up very quickly then to the sense of how um, the grandmothers function with all of this. And it's really about our spiritual development that I'm going to focus. It's absolutely about our physical health and our well-being as well. Our psychological, our mental, our physical well-being. And it's also about our spirit. So the joyful thing in primary cultures that were wise and guided by women, I think, 
was that every dark of the moon, natural women with their eyes under the moonlight bleed. So dark of the moon, bleeding time, four wonderful days off to go into the moon lodge to rest because of course bleeding women are absolutely intensely busy they always have been and now they are burdened even more with full-time jobs and many other things so taking time to rest and nurture during that four days is really really important and i think about that time as perhaps the first couple days being just resting maybe nibbling some things that are good for your blood and really nourishing, renewing yourself. But the second two days is what I want to focus on. And those days were very much about going into the deep feminine. And that meant sitting in quiet, going deep into spirit. And a woman in her bleeding time at the dark of the moon is the closest to the great mystery of anyone in the human form. The veil between us and the great mystery is thinnest then. So the charge then of women who were in the Moon Lodge was to always pray for all the people. Didn't matter if you prayed for yourself and you know worked with yourself other than that, but it was always about praying for the people saying, great creator, sweet mother earth, what can I bring through to help my people? So those two days were very, very powerful. And here's the interesting thing. Think about this. The moon is out and every woman's eyes were in the moonlight. So every woman in the village was in the moon lodge. So a young woman, woman let's say at 13, went into the moon lodge she had, in a sense, her first spiritual retreat or a vision quest, I'll call it. And she sat with women who had 50, 100, 200, 300, 400 spiritual retreats. So there was this deep richness and power there. And when you think about a young woman at 13, at 14, she had 13 spiritual retreats or vision quests. At 15, 26, 16, 39, 17, 52, 18, she'd already been in 65 spiritual retreats. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to emphasize because in those primary societies that were so wise, they were developing their women as deeply spiritual. I mean, it, a nun in the best sense of the word, in the sense that time to quiet, deepen, connect to spirit, listen, um, bring forward the richest part of one's spiritual life. So, and, and also, it's a deep honoring of that aspect of being a woman, that exactly. the cycling that, that represents our ability to give birth and to create. Exactly. And I love the Moon Lodge movement, the Red Tent movement that's happening because it's interesting how many women I talk to who are still, they're not happy about, they don't like, they're uncomfortable with, they socially... The curse. Yes, the curse. And I talk to them about how important the blood is and how rich in life and aliveness to create a new life and all of these wonderful things that I won't have time to talk about here. But it's absolutely vital because as you know, Ariana, we are in the rising time of the feminine. About a decade or so ago, the spiritual elders in many primary traditions handed the wands of power to the grandmothers and said, it is your time now. You females are the ones who are going to lead. And so here we are, we are the foremothers of this incredible time of the feminine. And the feminine, when I went into the sacred lodges, the sacred hat lodge of the Northern Cheyenne people where I worked with my grandmother teacher there, that 
represented the nurturing and renewing power of life. And that's what the feminine is about, is the nurturing and renewing of life. And thankfully, we as women get to step up now and step forward and begin to guide things. The guys have had about 10,000 years of doing various and sundry things. And there are so many wonderful men and there are some who do not serve. They are not, they are not what we would call a warrior or a chieftain. They do what they do for personal gain on other things, but a real chief, a real leader serves his people. So I wanna honor those men and also acknowledge that we have a lot of patriarchal leadership that absolutely isn't about respecting, renewing and nurturing life. So here we are, we get to pick it up after the enormous challenges that are out there right now. Yes. And that's why I think it's so important that we begin to, to come together. So just another couple of things about the Moon Lodge. Here's another fascinating thing. You know that the moon is the full moon all around the world. It's not like the sun. The moon is the full moon and the dark of the moon is the dark of the moon all around the world. So guess what that implies? That says that women in every culture all around the globe were sitting in their moon lodges at exactly the same time. Oh, praying powerful. and deepening into spirit. How powerful. It gives me chills. Yes, how powerful will that be as we come, we bring this tradition forward and bring it more into practice? Oh, exactly. And so when women went past their bleeding time, they went into the Wisdom Lodge, the Crone Lodge, the Grandmother Lodge. And the charge of that initiation was to move beyond the way we always say it is, is the children around your knees, you know, the, the people and the things that are right in your environment, which is plenty for a bleeding woman to take care of. But as you go into that moon lodge, that moon pause lodge, the elders lodge, your dedication is to the whole world, to the children, to nurture and renew the children of all things. Mm -hmm. And so there's this enormous um, responsibility that elder women have. And I, for one, wish that I had had about 400 vision quests to help my process, help deepen me to, to meet this challenge. Uh, I feel like such a child in a certain sense without some of that background. Yes, and, and you were gonna talk to us about how we can create practices that can help us in a way, not entirely, but in a way, kind of make up some of that ground. Yeah, and um, one of the things is um, about going into the deep feminine. I've been working with a lot of women and most all of us agree that we don't, as, as we're touching into the real true feminine, we're realizing that we don't even know half you know, a tiny bit of what it means to deepen ourselves into the richness. Because we are in a patriarchal society and we are about, you know, we've, we've been pulled into and stepped into a masculine world that says, get out there, work, accomplish, handle things, do it, be busy. You're, you're not good unless you accomplish. You shouldn't even have a child that takes too much time off work. You gotta go, 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 go. And there's no- It's all about the money. Yeah. Yeah. And with the medicine wheel, it's interesting because in the East is the beginning of things where it's early morning, springtime, uh, light coming, things dawning, sprouts coming up. And that's the little fem that's the little masculine. When we go to the South, it's the big masculine. It's like doing, handling things, busy, growing, summertime, hot, busy, intense. When we go around to the West, we, be, we start with the little feminine, which is to stop, quiet, gather, listen, go like the bear into the quiet time, into that vision quest time. So to gather and to release and to clear and let go, 
And then in the north is something that many of us don't have much of a chance to do is midwinter, midnight, total quiet, stillness, nothing happening. That's the deep feminine. That's when we can take our experience from all the rest of the wheel and deepen it into wisdom and meaning and richness and heart. And then out of that place, then we can bring a new, aha, now I'll know what to do next time and we can start again. So that deep feminine is really such an important thing. And fascinatingly enough, in many of the cultures, medicine women didn't really start their work. You know, the spiritual healer uh, women didn't start their actual work until they went into the elder lodge, until they were menopausal. Uh -huh. Because then they had time. Because I think that the, the grandmothers used those moon lodges all the time. They didn't just go there for four days. They could go any time. And I believe that they gathered together in council and deepened themselves, sitting in quiet and really pulling in that relationship and caring and love and respect for all things. They developed the baseline of how to be in the world that they held for their whole tribe. Yeah. So this, um, I, I just wanted to, to presence the, some of the other teachings that have been coming through. There are some ancient teachings that have come out of India about the holy womb chakra and that women have this womb chakra and that through it, we actually connect to the divine, the womb of the divine mother of all, the universal mother. So the, the womb of the cosmos. And so this is making me think about having that time to spend in Moon Lodge and honoring your womb is actually developing the strength energetically of that womb chakra and that connection to Divine Mother, both Divine Mother Earth and Divine Mother Cosmos. Exactly, exactly. You're, it's so right on, I think. And that's certainly the way we see it. I think of that divine cosmos as buff, white buffalo woman's womb, which contains all possibilities and all richness. Yes. And it's, it's fascinating for us as, as, as women and as elder women now to learn how to, by not doing, do. By quieting, by visioning, by holding energy, by prayer, um, by love, by extending love into the world, uh, and by asking uh, one technique that I've been given that I'd love to share with women is that um, we need to manifest and make many things happen in the world now. And White Buffalo Woman said to me, uh, when you make your prayer and you do all the things and you feel it and you got it all clear and all of that, often you just send your prayer out right where you are. She said, I'd like to invite you to go deep, 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 deep into the center of my womb, into the center of the center of the void, the cosmic womb that has all possibilities. And she said, journey there where everything is possible. Mm -hmm. There are no limitations. And drop your vision, your dream there and you will find things manifesting much more clearly without your daily, you know, your limitations and your thoughts and all of that getting in the way. So that's one thing we can do. And I do think that, you know, I wanna bring it to the present for uh, women because I know many women are sad like I am that they haven't had uh, these, this knowledge and the understanding to practice these spiritual ways. But I think that our elder women now have a very special moment in time because hopefully not all of them are working like I am out in the world and that many of you women have a little more time. And I really encourage you to soften, stop, quiet, deepen your practice, find a practice of quietness, 
a practice of being on the earth every day uh, so that you can really begin in your rich wisdom to find that deeper feminine, which many women who are running and have children and have so much, you know, they're doing, they really don't have a lot of time. And as you said, Ariana, that, you know, it's vitally important for us now because even the Dalai Lama has said that Western women will be the saving of the world. And, you know, besides all the other things we have to take care of, I always kind of tease women and say, well, I have good news and bad news for you. You know, you got all these other things going on, your family, home, work, you know, business, da, da, da. Uh, and Damn. you get to save the world too. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so a lot of the work that I've been doing around the world and that I'm interested in for women is to help them have the health and energy they need to function in this time. And one of those things, too, that I'd like to offer to, the, to women and the grandmothers is to come together as women. We have an ancient bodily experience of women coming together, building oxytocin and building support and releasing tension. It's the nurturing, er, the nurturing hormone. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, that whole thing about mothers and nurturing and nursing and all of that. But for women, it's the one that really makes us feel well and feel like we're supported and not just doing it all on our own. So women coming together, coming together in community. And I'd really like to suggest that when possible, um, some of you women out there start gathering circles of 13. Uh, grandmothers. It's kind of a magical number and some of these wonderful indigenous women have modeled that for us. Mm -hmm. But come together, spend time together, use your incredible wisdom and all your resources to offer something to your world, to your local world and life and children and people. Uh, because it'll support your energy as you grow older. I think that one of the things that sometimes happens as we grow older is that uh, we maybe isolate a little. We've got a big house. Maybe our uh, husband has gone, our children aren't around, and it's easy to not connect. But I would like to invite women to really get out there and connect because when at 29 you come into your first Saturn return, and that sets you up for your adult life and work. But at 58, a time when many women are going into their moon lodge and their elder time, you also have another opportunity to create a new life. And so much of our culture now says, well, you're, you're done. There's nothing left. You're an old woman. You don't have anything yes. to offer. And this, this is something that I think really doesn't serve us as in the United States, we have these retirement communities where older people segregate themselves away from children. They're too loud and noisy, and we just want to be by ourselves. But that often ends up in creating this sort of fossilization. You can mm -hmm. get stuck. And part of being a wise elder is always continuing to grow and learn and do our own work so that mm -hmm. we can actually make a difference and continue to make a difference in the world. So I, I think it's just vitally important. Well, one of the things I wanted to mention is when women go into their, uh, you know, when I ceremonially uh, invite women into their moon pause lodge, into the elders lodge, uh, as I said, one of the charges, the specific charge is to serve the larger world. And I ask them ahead of time, to really be thinking about what is it that you just love doing? What is it that you feel like you could just offer your energy toward, that you would just be excited and happy about? And to realize that you are choosing a new life, to choose that with enthusiasm and joy. And I believe that keeps us healthy psychologically, uh, you know, mentally, physically, and everything else. When we have a goal, when we have, we know that we have this life, who knows how long we'll live, but 
by gosh, we're going to go for it while we can and use everything we have yes. and offer and be excited. And I'm like you, I'd like to see more. I think that when women come into more leadership, we're going to have more elder communities that take care of the children where, you know, there's, there's this wonderful blending of animals and children and grandparents, because as I said, the grandmothers have always been the ones that taught the young girls about their moon time, about relationship, about uh, being women. And so all of these things, I think, are possibilities for us. And one of my other speakers is from Japan. And we had a conversation about how she grew up with her grandmothers teaching her about the sacredness of nature and the, the sacredness of all things. And her grandmothers were the ones who always held her in, in this possibility of everything she could be. So I know that you also weave in a number of things from different cultures and that part of your work has been to weave cultural traditions together. Tell us some more about that. You know, I was born um, uh, with a very much of a mixture. I have five kinds of Indian blood and Scott Irish and uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just visited Denmark uh, to uh, say hi to some of my Danish ancestry from long, long ago. Uh, so I, I started as a rainbow child, you might say, um, who understood that um, for me, it's not about so much each individual tradition and, and, you know, keeping really tight and closed around that. It's looking into the depth of our traditions to find what works for human beings. Because we're so clear now that we're so connected, we're so involved with each other. And it's vitally important, I think, for us to be sharing. And I'm really thrilled that you have done, you've really done your homework to bring in some other cultures. And, uh, you know, the more that all of us share and talk and offer, uh, one of the interesting things is that when I went back to my Native American elders, to ask them about the moon time teachings. They were raised by Catholic missionaries. All of those women were taken. I mean, if you can imagine uh, yes. people coming in and every, every, every single child was taken to the missionary. There was not a child left in the villages. Yeah. And they were all taught a different way, their ways were said to be bad. So when I spoke to these elder grandmothers, I felt like I was talking to a Catholic nun because that's what they had learned. And they had learned a lot of um, shame and um, discomfort and so many things. So it was really difficult for me to find. And I know some of my wonderful learning came out of Chinese and Japanese tradition and other traditions where they remember some of the ways of honoring uh, women's time, honoring the womb. Um, so I'm just thrilled that we're starting to share with each other and I think it's yes. vitally important. Yeah, and I just wanna bring in Rihanna Eisler's language to this, her work around domination versus partnership instead of patriarchy and matriarchy. Because this is a way in which we can think about our, our cultures weaving together in partnership, which is none are going to be above or dominating or controlling the others, but all are, will be in partnership so that we can weave together with fundamental honoring of each other yeah. and of all traditions that are, that are healthy and healing for people and earth. You know, I think that's so right on. Um, I've been paying a lot of attention to, um, you know, some of the work that Rianne and many other women now are looking at around matrifocal uh, societies. And as you say, it's not about matriarchy and one, some, just a woman higher rather than a man higher. Mm -hmm. But those societies that we look at are egalitarian and they're focused in nurturing and taking care of in oxytocin. They're oxytocin, uh, feel good, connect, nurture, offer. And those societies are gifting societies. Their, their economies aren't about uh, com competition and struggle. They're about making sure that everyone has what they need 
And that doesn't mean only the primary focus, which is women and children, but that extends out and out and out and out to everyone. And, and this, so, and this ultimately serves the men because it, men have natural aspects of themselves that are nurturing also. And those have been kind of drummed out of many men in our culture, in this dominator culture. And men, men produce oxytocin also. When, when a father holds his baby and looks at that baby in the face, the father is producing oxytocin also. When a man looks at his beloved, they, they are producing oxytocin also. And oxytocin, interestingly, is being used to treat autism. Isn't this wonderful? Well, yeah. you know, the thing, that, the thing that is so joyous, really, is, is the thing that it works for everyone. Because I think that men, and we're really out of balance. And I think men now are terribly stressed. You know, we realize that women have challenges. But I look at men and realize that they they don't get to feel they've got to work they're competing they're struggling in so many different ways and um, to be more relaxed to have a nurturing environment and be part of that nurturing environment to not have so much stress uh, for everyone to be uh, nourished and nurtured without competition and struggle and fighting if men want to compete, they can go have a wonderful ball game and play and, you know, kick the ball around and just have a wonderful time. But they don't have to do that kind of, oh, my God, you know, kind of, I've got to do this and I've got to, you know, that kind of terrible energy that's out there now. Yeah. So, yes, it's just a joy for everyone. So that bringing men and women into partnership is creating greater wholeness for all of us. And then we can begin to create greater wholeness for our whole earth and bring back the balance in the way that we treat our mother earth and nature. That is for sure. And you know, uh, we probably don't have much time to talk about this, nor I, am I an expert, but one of the things that's really coming up strongly for me right now is the teachings around sacred sexuality. Mm -hmm. And when I think about nurturing women, supporting women, having their energy be in a good and positive place. Um, you know, the studies of every possible kind all around the world show that good, intimate sexuality is absolutely nurturing, uh, you know, anti-cancer, supportive of our heartbeat, our, I mean, I can't even tell you all the things that it does. And I think that I want to encourage as well older women to realize that hey, no need to stop. Yeah, we're not, not done with that. <laughs> we're not done with that, gals. You're not done with that. Just, just make it more rich and deep. And there's some wonderful books out there talking about all that these days. Mm -hmm. But to really realize that that union, that connection is so powerful for us and that we nurture and serve each other. So to develop those kinds of relationships and as well, I'm talking to women about how men function and how women function so that women can really feel supported and men can feel supported and all be happier and in better relationship and feel more comfortable, uh, you know, taking care of the kids and everything else that needs to be done. Yes, yes, yes. So we are coming to the end of our time. So um, I know you want to give us a closing prayer, but tell people a little bit about the gift that you have. So there will be a link underneath, there is a link underneath this video where you can click to go and find Brooke Medicine Eagle's beautiful gifts. So tell us what they were going to find. Well, they'll find some of the wonderful songs that are oriented toward women. And um, we're going to include some of the writings for women. Uh, some of the chapters out of my book, and then they will also receive discounts on many of the kind of things that are teachings about the moon time and about uh, the general teachings that I offer. So um, I really look forward to sharing those things with them. Yes, and the, the link to Brooke's website is underneath this video as well, so you can explore and see all of the wonderful things that she offers. So please give us your closing prayer song. All right. I want to offer women a song from the grandmothers. This is an ancient uh, Native women's song, 
And I think it's a song from the loving hearts of all the grandmothers uh, and our ancestors who I want to honor here as well and invite in. So here's this women's healing song for you. Na be hae, na be hae, na be hae, na be hae. Hele kuhe lang ku. Hele kuhe lang ku. Na pe no So great mother. Creator, we are so joyous that the cycles of time are coming around to support the nurturing and renewing of life that is so important now. The nurturing and renewing of all life, the support of women and children and men alike, where the elders are held to be wise and we are able to offer the richness, joy, beauty of ourselves into the world. So I ask a special blessing on all those who are elder women. May you all be especially blessed, healthy, wealthy, wise, and offering all that to the world. Thank you, Creator. Thank you, Mother Earth. Many blessings. For all my relations. Thank you so much, Brook Medicine Ego for your beautiful presence, for all your work in the world, and for being part of Reclaiming the Wise Woman Elder for the healing of Earth. Many blessings mm -hmm. to you. I felt that song washing through my body with beautiful waves. Thank you. All right, love to everyone.